Okay, Lane Biology. The cell theory in your body, the cell is the basic structure. Uh, still be able to maintain all the functions your body has. So they can produce, they can maintain a stable environment. We call it homeostasis. And cells have different structure, uh, different structure to perform their function, like the muscle. Uh, it's, it's a long structure, it's able to contract, produce a big power. And the fat cells look like fat because the inside is mainly fat and their function is store fat. So different cells have different function uh, and the structure are very different. This is neuron, this is the cell in the brain. They look like a very complicated because it's ready to create a neural network. The cells outside, we have extracellular fluid, also called interstitial fluid. And it's covered by the cell membrane. Cell membrane is made of lipid by layer, phospholipid. And inside the cell, they have liquid, we call it intracellular fluid. And also they have a nucleus and other organelles. So that's the cell, we have the outside, and there's a cell membrane, and there's the inside. The cell membrane is like the skin of your body. It has several functions. It provides the physical uh, isolation and protection. And also it has sensitivity, uh, like your skin is a big sensory organ. And also have the structure support function. And this slide shows you the cell membrane. It's mainly made of phospholipid. We talk about this molecule in the lipid. And that's the phospholipid by layer. So it has two layers. And other molecules you have uh, lipid is cholesterol. Cholesterol, its job is to fill the gap, increase the, uh, the structure of the cell membrane. Also have the membrane protein and also have some sugar. This sugar is for immune function. Your immune system be able to identify that's your cell and that's not your cell. And then look at the, the sugar part. And the proteins on the cell membrane they have different functions. Some of them are receptors. When we talk about the enzyme, uh, sorry, not the enzyme, the neuro nervous system and the endocrine system, they release neurotransmitter and hormones. They will bind with the receptor. And some membrane proteins are channels and carrier. Both of them, their job is to uh, make the molecule move in and move out of the cell. Because the cell membrane, it does not allow a lot of molecules just simply diffuse through the cell membrane. And your cells need those molecules, so then you need channels and carrier to help. Some membrane proteins are enzymes, so they help the, to uh, trigger the chemical interaction in the body. And you also have the anchor proteins, uh, maintain the structure identifier, that's the protein to help your immune system identify that's your cell and that's not your cell. So this is a table to tell you the different functions of membrane proteins. And let's focus on the transport part. Your cell membrane has selective permeability. It only allows certain molecules to move through. And the permeability depends on the molecular size. So if the molecule is smaller, it's easier to go through the cell membrane. And the bigger, the update. Electrical charge, no charge molecule is easier to go through the cell membrane. And the cell membrane does not like charge the particle. So ions have difficulty to go through the cell membrane. Molecular shape is similar to the size. So the bigger one is more difficult. Lipid solubility, because the cell membrane is made of phospholipid. So the lipid molecule or lipid soluble molecule is easier to go through the cell membrane. And the process for the molecule to go through the cell membrane, we can put them into the passive and carrier mediated. So the passive, we have simple diffusion, we have filtration. And the carrier mediated, uh, we have the, they require membrane protein, so it can be divided into the facilitated transport and active transport. So let's start from the passive one first. And the easiest one is diffusion. So diffusion is a molecule that naturally go from high concentration to the low concentration area, and that's diffusion. 
So it depends on the concentration gradient. Concentration gradient is a big word to say concentration difference. So it goes from high to low. And water also goes from high water to low water area. And water diffusion, we don't call it water diffusion, we call it osmosis. And the pressure it creates is osmotic pressure. So from low to high osmotic pressure. And sometimes students uh, get confused about this part. So I suggest students to think that water always go to dilute the solute. Say you have the high solute, low solute, and the water always go to the high solute area. Try to dilute the solute. So the water move in the opposite direction as the solute. In diffusion, you put a molecule into the solution. It just go from high concentration to low concentration area. Eventually, it become a homogeneous solution. It's the same concentration, and that's diffusion. If the molecule can go through the cell membrane, lipid or lipid soluble, soluble molecule like steroid, you can simply diffuse through the cell membrane, and the mechanism is simple diffusion. For water, and that's osmosis. So like this example, we have two containers separated by the uh, semi-permeable membrane. It's like an artificial cell membrane. And we have solute glucose on this side, more concentrated than the A side. And for the glucose, it naturally want to go from high concentration, which is the B side, to A side, low concentration, because every molecule want to go from high to low. But in this case, Glucose could not go because of cell membrane is semi-permeable. So the, the, the glucose could not go, and the only thing can go is water. So water will go from A to B, go to dilute the solute. So that's osmosis. Osmosis is water always go to dilute the high concentration of solute. And the pressure to put them back is osmotic pressure. And that's osmosis. And to affect Osmosis, we have different solution. So if the solution, you put the red blood cell into the solution, and the cells maintain the normal shape, we call this solution isotonic solution. And if you put the red blood cell into the solution, it turns out the cell shrink, lose water, or shiver, or uh, uh, it becomes smaller, shrink. It's, and the solution, we say the concentration is too high, so that's hypertonic solution. So hypertonic solution make the cell shrink. And if you put the red blood cell into the solution, it turns out the cell swell or sometimes burst. And sometimes you see the word hemolyze, H-E-M-O-L-Y-Z-E, -E, hemolyze. That means it burst. And the solution concentration is too low. Too low is hypotonic. So hypotonic solution makes the cell swell and burst. So that's the red blood cell uh, case. You put the red blood cell into the solution, and red blood cell still maintain its donut shape, and we call this solution isotonic solution. If you put the red blood cell into the solution, and the cell swell, and turn out the burst, that's the hypotonic solution. And the example is pure water. So before you take this class, you think drinking water is important. That's true, but it's not the more the better. If you drink too much water too quickly, you can turn your body solution into the hypotonic solution. And that's what's going to happen in your red blood cell. Your red blood cell can swell or worst, uh, burst or die. If you put red blood cell into the solution, it turns out the cell shrink or crenate. The big word to say the cell shrink is crenate, C-R-E-N-A-T-E, crenate. And that means the water move out, try to dilute the, the high concentration solute outside. So we say this hypertonic solution. Hypertonic solution make the cell shrink. And good example is salt. So a hundred years ago, and people get a lot of fish, meat in the summer, and they want to keep the meat till the winter, so they cover the meat with salt. And that's the super extreme hypertonic situation. Because when you cover the meat with salt, and all the water inside the meat try to go out, dilute the salt. And when, when the meat has no water, bacteria could not survive. So you can keep the meat for months and sometimes years. 
and that's the hypertonic solution. So hypertonic make the cell uh, shrink. And this lady, she drink too much water. She went to a competition sponsored by the local radio station. And they asked them to drink as much water as possible and hold the pee. And it turned out she drank too much water and she died. And the reason is she drank too much water, she turned her body solution into a hypotonic solution. And her red blood cell died and eventually her body shut down. Should you drink seawater? And we all know the answer is no. The reason is the seawater is a hypertonic solution. So if you drink seawater, it turns out they will make your cell shrink more and you got even more thirsty. The second mechanism for the passive transport is uh, filtration. So filtration is you have the hydrostatic pressure and you push the water through a slit and that's what happens in your kidney. So when you form urine, you will filter your blood and your, it becomes urine. So urine directly comes from your blood and that, that's the filtration process. Now let's look at the carrier mediated transport. You have the facilitated diffusion and active transport. You see these two kind of activity in the kidney and in the digestive system, we will see both of them in unit 5. In the kidney, you filter your blood and a lot of important molecules in the blood need to be taken back. You don't want them to become the urine. So you need a lot of membrane protein to carry glucose, sodium back. Similar for your digestive system. After you eat the food, they digest the food, but they need to absorb the nutrients into your body. So they need a lot of membrane protein to take the nutrients, take the important molecule back to your blood. And those carrier mediated transport can be divided into the facilitated diffusion and active transport. Let's look at the facilitated diffusion first. Facilitated diffusion is they don't require ATP, they don't require biological energy. They can transport the molecules from high concentration to low concentration area. And they can move cold transport, counter transport, they can move more than one molecule in the same or the opposite direction. And good example, glucose carrier. So after you eat a meal, you have a lot of blood sugar, that's glucose. And your glucose carrier, its job is to move the molecule from high to low. You just use the protein to help to move the molecule. And that's facilitated diffusion because the molecules still move from high to low. It does not require ATP. And let's look at what's active transport. Active transport, this time it requires ATP, the biological molecule, biological energy source. ATP, use ATP as the energy source to move the molecule from low to high. And a good example, sodium potassium pump, also called sodium potassium exchanger. And this is the membrane protein you have in every body cell. Its job is to use ATP as energy source to move sodium from low to high. So you're going to have high sodium outside of the cell. And going to move potassium from low to high. So inside the cell is high potassium. And that's because of sodium potassium pump. And the vesicle transport, that's uh, when the cell membrane do the structure change, move the molecule in and out. So if they move in, called endocytosis, and they move out, called exocytosis. So this example, they move the molecule into the cell, that's the endocytosis. And this white blood cells uh, take the particles in, and when they move the bacteria or particles in, they will use the, lys uh, the lysosomes. There's the organelles inside the cell to digest them and to kill the bacteria. That's the endocytosis. And that's another example. So your white blood cell move the molecule in endocytosis. Let's take a short break.